There are lots of different ways to layer paint onto furniture. Um, they make different distresses, different styles, but the way I'm gonna talk to you about today kind of creates a kind of mismatch bohemian, um, lots of colors, but you don't, there's no rhyme or reason to why the colors are where they are. It's not really a distressed look of furniture. It's just a crazy, crazy layers of furniture. And I love the look. Um, so to do that kind of look, I start with a couple basic tools. I have my Annie Sloan uh, round bristle brush. You really need a round bristle brush for this, this kind of look because you do what I call zhuzhing and it's like you push against the furniture and you do this and it really blends your paint together. Uh, I also use a really old rag as you can see here that's had a rough life. A squirt bottle with a really fine mist to it and the weirdest tools of all, putty knives. Uh, this one is a little bit more of like a flexible kind and this one works really great when you're using like uh, a thicker paint. So what I mean like that is you can take your Annie Sloan paint and let it sit out and dry a little while. And then you like scoop this out and you goob it on and it makes a really funky texture. Um, this is not quite as, as of um, a bendable, oh, I'm trying to think what they're calling it now. Putty knife, there we go. It's early in the morning here. Um, so this I kind of use to scrape along the paint to kind of give it a non brush stroke look, um, but a funky texture and it's really, really fun. This method is definitely not for anyone who has some like OCD control issues because um, it's just an artsy splash it all over the place kind of look, which is really, really fun to paint and really freeing because you don't have to worry about if something matches or if something looks the same as over here, just go with it. So I'll show you a step-by-step -step of what I'm doing here. Um, right up here are the chairs I'm working on. Let's see, the backs are, they're pretty cool chairs. Um, they kind of have like a, I don't know if it's a Victorian or what kind of cutout here in the back, but it's neat. Um, and right now I've put a slip slap, or that's what I call it when I take this little brush and just flail paint like this just all over it. That's what I call slip slapping. Um, it's got a slip slap coat on it of Annie Sloan Chateau Gray. And I'll show you up close. I mean, really, this is, this is not meant to be a perfect situation. So see how it, I mean, I don't want it to cover everything. That's kind of the point. See how right here it's kind of got these weird marks in it too? That's from the putty knife. So it gives you a different high and low than a paintbrush might, and it scrapes it off differently. So I'm gonna go in with my next color now. Oops, sorry. Um, I think I'm gonna probably end up doing, oh, maybe six or eight colors on this. You don't really know till you get going, and it's just a, a fun place to experiment. So, watch along. I'm gonna try to show you the close-up back of this chair here, so you can really see as I'm painting the kind of different textures that you get, even though actually this is a whole large dining room set. Um, this is just a little peek of it, because I don't think you want to watch me paint for hours and hours and hours, even if some of you act like you do want to because you're so nice. So this is uh, the next color I'm gonna use, Annie Sloan Provence, and I have my big round brush, and I literally am just going to, again, this is what I call slip slapping. You gotta throw some there, you're gonna kinda do like this here and a little bit over there. It's not, like I said, it's not meant to be any sort of rhyme or reason. Um, you're just making layers and layers and layers of colors. So you see how it kind of is, you know, more there, but then none right here. That's cool, that's fine. Um, I'll show you also, you could take your putty knife here, try to get this in the camera, and kind of dip it in there and get some on there, and then do 
that and it leaves these really cool thicker areas you don't really understand why or how they're there but they are it's one of my favorite things I think I saw I believe it was either um, all shaved out or the turquoise iris do this one time and um, I thought well that's freaking brilliant so it just makes the coolest textures so you can kind of see here and you can of course you know go your different directions but also in the midst of this tool tools here is that we have a squirt bottle and I'll show you if you you know, spray it a little bit and then if you want to blend it in spray it and take your round brush and kind of work that water in and it will smooth everything back out totally just depending on what style you're going for what layer you're on um, I know I'll probably go back with the same colors I'm using right now it's not like I'm gonna be done with Chateau Grey or Provence it's just it's just an artsy thing as you feel as you go so I'm gonna go and finish and do this on all six chairs and the dining room set and then I'll be back with you for the next color Next, I'm going to do a, a wash of Annie Sloan French linen. Um, I just had a little bit left in the edges of a can, so I just put some water in there and stirred it up. And I just kind of want a translucent kind of overall haze of this color. I'm not even sure how well it's coming up through the picture but of course just like the other colors it doesn't have to be solid in any way so that would be kind of let's see if I can get closer and you can see that haze to it um, and if it gets too thick in some areas I'll just wipe it back and if I need it thicker in areas I'll take a full strength French linen Next, I'm going to add some uh, Emperor Silk. Let's see if I can get in close there. See that it's kind of a dried out um, can of it. Uh, so what I do is when I'm almost done with a can of Annie Sloan chalk paint, I still put the lid back on and put it on my shelf because if you have something like this in there and you add water to it, you'll end up with a perfect wash or you'll end up with something that's kind of chunky and so you get like this kind of thicker paint and it makes for really cool taking this putty knife and it makes a texture that's just phenomenal. And so I'm gonna go along and hit or miss these chairs with this putty knife of kind of dried out crusty paint here because I want just teeny little hints of this red. I probably won't use my brush at all. Um, because I don't want it too scary. So here, I'll show you another close up of that. So, back to work. Now I'm going to do uh, Andy Sloan Graphite, mostly all over. I really actually want these to be dark chairs. Um, and so I'm gonna kind of paint them in a zhuzhi motion. I still want it to be transparent, but solid if that is anything here. So let's see. I don't really wanna cover everything I've done, but I wanna kind of go over everything so it doesn't look like a complete hodgepodge so I could do like that and I could take my spray bottle yeah, this is close up this kind of got this dark haze over top of everything you can still see the red and stuff then I might take and wipe this back kind of depending on what I want to do and where and how um, I might add a little bit more. I 
don't want to take away all the beauty we've created, but I want to make it a little more cohesive. So some areas are going to be blacker than others. You can do this with a wash if you want. Um, I wanted it a little bit stronger than that, so I have it, I'm just really pushing it around a lot. So here's a way to see it down there where it's just pushed around over top of it a lot. So that's the next step. Gonna go around and uh, try to do that. I just wanted to show you another quick thing you do when you're doing like this black all over. So if I were to just take straight paint out of my can here and put it on, it gets kind of streaky. So to avoid that, you can spray beforehand and spray it and then kind of do what I call zhuzhing and it kind of allows you to spread it around without washing down a bunch of paint first or watering down a bunch of paint first because some places I want it stronger than others. And so this is like on the fly color washing. So you can kind of see, so it's still darker here now but that it doesn't have such as much of like a brushed area, but more of just a haze, which is what I'm going for. So now I'm going to take some duck egg blue here on my trusty spatula with my spray bottle on my rag, and I'm just gonna kind of blend in some lighter little areas, textures with it, just kind of, uh, the more layers, the more colors, the more textures you can give, the cooler it really ends up being. So if you're going along and you end up and you're like, whoa though, that's too bright. You can just take your rag and kind of blend it into the rest and then it'll instantly look like an old texture that you're unsure of how it got there. Let's see if I can get you a good view here sorry about that so that's the next step where we're gonna go for the next and i believe final color we're gonna go uh again with my trusty putty knife here and a little bit of graphite and we're gonna hit just a couple teeny spots with it just to kind of make some a little bit more darker areas with it too. So, I'm gonna go and do that everywhere. So here is the result of the paint jobs done on these chairs before they've been waxed. Now I'm going to clear wax them next and that will really kind of richen all the colors too. And then I'm either going to black wax or dark wax. I have not decided yet, but each part of each chair is completely different, um, which is what makes it cool. So time to get back to work. So now all of the painting has been done and all of the clear waxing. So I'm gonna go in with some Annie Sloan uh, black wax. It's like really, really deep dark shoe polish. And I have a special dark wax brush because you don't want to mix up your clear wax and your dark wax brushes. This is the small Annie Sloan wax brush. And I'll get a little bit there on my brush and then start putting it on. And I want it to really tone everything down, so it's gonna really be pretty much everywhere. Then I will get a lint-free towel here. I use my Blue Shop towels. And I will grab it back off. And so now if you see close, you can see the difference of where it's been black wax and where it hasn't been 
how it just kind of tones everything down a bit. So I'm gonna get doing all the chairs now. So next is the step of the gold gilding wax. I'm going to be using a um, Annie Sloan warm gold mixed in with um, a little bit of dark wax. And with gilding wax, it's always your last step. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of it. You don't need much. And I'm gonna start to kind of figure out where I want it and how I want it. And I want it pretty thick on here. And I'm gonna cover quite a bit with it. You can see how it starts to kind of come through there, try to rub it around. And I can get my towel out here too and kind of blend it in a little bit more. And then make it some stronger in some areas. And that's the plan for that. Here is the finished chair finish. Um, we did a lot of the gold gilding wax in the same putty painting method. It has a pretty cool finish in the end on it. And then it will be upholstered in this fabric right here. And so next week's video will show you how to reupholster an existing chair. And then we'll show it all together when I finish all the other chairs in this set. Hope you enjoyed. Happy painting.